In 13.5, we're going to look at how matter moves through an ecosystem. So matter is different than what energy was, and that energy is lost from one level to the next. Matter, or nutrients, get passed on completely from one organism to the next. So if that same polar bear came in and ate you that I talked about in the last one, it's going to get all of the chemicals or all of the matter that was in your body but only 10% of the energy you would have. The one of these cycles for matter is the water cycle. So hydro, uh, hydrological or water uh, cycle is a circular pathway of water on the earth. Uh, organisms all have bodies made mostly of water. So if we look here, the, the different things that you would have is you have evaporation, which is going to be water leaving the um, surface of bodies of water as it gets heated up. It's going to uh, end up causing it to change form into a gas. And so that's what evaporation is. Another thing like evaporation is transpiration. Transpiration is going to be the evaporation of water from plants. Then once that water gets into the air, it's going to cool and it's going to do condensation, which is going to be the forming of clouds. It's going to cool uh, and combine into clouds. When the condensation gets too high in the clouds, you're going to end up with the precipitation. And when the precipitation, whether it's rain, snow, sleet, or hail, lands on the ground, it's going to either become surface runoff or it will land in a body of water. If it is surface runoff and ends up landing on the ground and is sitting there, it can turn into groundwater. Or if it's in the groundwater, it can do the seepage and end up into a water supply again and start that whole process over once more. So that's the, the water cycle. So when we are talking about these different cycles, there is what is known as the biogeochemical cycle. Uh, there are different parts to it. Uh, the two main parts are the biological and the geological and then you have the chemical and you have human activity are the main parts of the biogeochemical cycle. And that's how these different uh, elements end up being able to move through the biosphere or through the different ecosystems. So the biological ones are gonna be the ones that we focus on mainly. Um, geological is gonna be like the different parts of the earth and how it's able to exchange uh, elements from or these chemicals from one part to the other uh, chemical things would be like lightning and things like that um, and a lot of times it's uh, written as physical and chemical together and then the human activities are going to be things like burning of fossil fuels and stuff like that so the main process involved in the oxygen cycle are photosynthesis and respiration. So oxygen is a key key uh, element and it's going to be found in lots of these different cycles in one form or the other. So in the ox oxygen cycle, uh, it directly uh, goes through an ecosystem by the cycling of other nutrients, like I said. So Right here is the oxygen cycle. The plants create it in photosynthesis. We take it in um, by eating the plants or eating animals that have eaten the plants. And we do respiration, which gives off carbon dioxide, which the plants take back in. So another key cycle is the carbon cycle. Carbon is uh, the building block of life. And we'll talk about it when we get into the uh, chemistry of life section after we're done with ecology. But the carbon cycle moves carbon from the atmosphere through the food web and returns it to the atmosphere. So carbon is going to a lot of times be emitted by the burning of fossil fuels. 
Some carbon is stored for long periods of times in areas called carbon sinks. So a key thing with every one of these cycles, whether it's the oxygen cycle, carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, phosphorus cycle, they all require these main steps. The first step is the plant is going to convert that element into something that is useful. So the we can't just take carbon from the air and be able to, to do things with it. We need plants to have converted it. So the plants are going to do the first thing and they're going to convert that carbon into uh, sugars when they do respiration. I'm sorry, not when they do respiration, when they do photosynthesis. They're going to uh, convert that carbon that's there into sugars. And then we as humans are going to come along and eat those plants and we're going to get those sugars that the plant had made. And that's the second step. So a plant makes it. Second step, a consumer is going to come along and take it from the plant, uh, whether it's eating it or just getting it from something that the plant has created. Um, the next step is after it's been consumed by a consumer, the consumer is going to get rid of stuff as a waste product, whether it's doing respiration, getting rid of, in this case, carbon dioxide, or you pee or poop it out some way. Um, so that's going to be the next step is they're going to use it and release it as a waste product. Or if that organism dies, then it will go on to the decomposition part for it. So that is the next step. And, and then the final steps are the uh, organism dies or it's passed on the the genetic information, or not passed on the genetic information, it's passed on uh, the nutrients to one of the decomposers and they put it back into the environment. So the nitrogen cycle is different than the other cycles in that it is going to take place underground, plus Plants can't just take nitrogen from the atmosphere. They need the bacteria that's in the soil to convert the nitrogen that's in the atmosphere into ammonia, which then the plants are able to use. That process is called nitrogen fixation. Um, at the end, they're also going to do denitrification, and they're going to put uh, the nitrogen back into the atmosphere. So some nitrogen fixing bacteria live on nodules of plants, uh, of the roots of the plants, and others are going to be free living in the soil. So once again, plant is going to create stuff from the nitrogen that it takes in. Animals are going to eat that uh, plant and get that the different nitrogen. Uh, things that it needs from the plant. The nitrogen is going to go into helping make uh, proteins, amino acids, DNA, all of those things. Um, we'll get that nitrogen from the plants. Once again, we will then uh, pee or poop it out or release it as a waste product. And then you're going to end up having the bacteria as it breaks it down is going to put that nitrogen back into the atmosphere or the plants are going to use that nitrogens that we got rid of as a waste product to start that process over again. We'll be playing a game also here uh, in class of the nitrogen cycle. So ammonia once again is going to be released into the soil and transformed into ammonium. Then you have the nitrifying bacteria You're going to change the ammonium to nitrates and the nitrogen moves through the food web and returns to the soil during decomposition. Phosphorus cycle. The phosphorus cycle takes place um, at or below ground level. You have phosphate is going to be released by the weathering of rocks. Phosphorus is going to move through the food web and returns to the soil during decomposition. And the phosphorus is going to leach into the groundwater from the soil and the rocks and the sediments. 
So both mining and agriculture add phosphorus to the environment. So um, once again, plants are going to use it, animals are going to consume the plants and get that, that phosphorus from the plants and be able to use that. Um, so that concludes the notes for section five, and that is all of the notes for this chapter.